Hi, everyone. It's Katina Robolino coming in for the professional development on July 20th, 2022. And I am taking a moment to go over the template for student test reflections. I wanted to go over a few things just so you have it um, in the file that I am putting up for you on Google Drive that's going to show you how to uh, edit and manipulate the different uh, columns and rows to how you need it to be. So uh, as you remember from the professional development, we talked about what the first page is, which is basically the data analysis. This is where students are going through the test and they're looking at the numbers and they are taking a moment to see what areas or learning goals or TEKS that they understand. So let me just go ahead and kind of show you how this works. So as you can tell here, the directions are basically set for you. You don't really need to change them unless you want to change how this works. But basically what happens is you just click here, put the learning goal that the students are going to be working with in the exam, put the numbers here. And then what you're going to do is if you notice these are white and they're kind of preset, but what if you only have, let's say for this T content, you only have four, four questions and not all these. So what you would do is you would take your mouse and you would hover at the corner where you get this black, um, dark arrow. You would click and what would pop up would be this, um, toolbar that would tell you what to do with inside these boxes. And what you would do is you would come here to the paint can and you would pick the shading and then you would pick black. And as you can tell here, it is all set and all colored in and I'll just kind of show you. So if I made a mistake, I would go back and I would change it to white. And let's just say we have four. So I would go black one, two, So then here I would have my four spaces. But let's say in this area, same, same thing, I have, you know, two more that I need to add. You would just, again, hover over with the arrow, click on it, and change the color or the shading to white. And then you would go from there. And that is how you basically change those particular colors. Now, if you want to go ahead and uh, get rid of this part here, you can. This here is I have the students kind of work on their score, um, and it's broken up basically into what my score is, which is the number correct and the percentage. So just remember the number correct is going to be them counting how many they got correct from column B, adding it up, putting that here. So that would be, say, for example, uh, 23. Okay, then here in the questions, they would take 23 and divide it by the total number of questions, which would give them their percent score. I do like to have my students kind of calculate their own score from here because then they're not focusing on their grade. Um, they're focusing on, you know, what content goals they have, how they did. Um, they can see, you know, maybe this content area, they did well, they got green, but in this content area, they got pink and now they kind of know what to focus on. Um, so that basically helps them there. On this part, how many more questions do you need to pass? Uh, what I like to do here is I like to calculate for them how many number questions they need to get a 70. So if I were to say out of 25 questions, just off the top of my head, uh, I'm assuming that's going to be 17, 18 questions around there. Uh, and then I would put that in, you would need 19 questions to get a 70. Here they would determine, well, I got a 78, so I would need zero more questions to pass. Well, if they got a 63, then they would say, I need, you know, two more questions to get it right. And then here on the bottom, this is for mastery. I usually say a 90%. So then I would go here and say, okay, you need, out of 25 questions, I would say, okay, you need 19 questions, okay? Um, just kind of 
quickly calculating. And again, sorry, math people, I may be wrong. Um, put that in. And then from there, they would just count the difference from how many more they need to make a 90 or even higher. Um, so that just lets the students know, well, okay, wow, maybe I should go back and I should recheck my work. Maybe that's a skill they need to work on instead of just finishing and turning it in. So those are just some things that I feel would be helpful for students to realize. And it does help them, you know, learn how to calculate their grades because many of them do get a little confused. Now for here with um, the green uh, areas, what you're going to find is they need to list why they think they did well. For the yellow, why they think they are still in progress or they're approaching, and in pink, why they're below average. Um, so here it has them an, an out to, an, to create an analysis or reflect what's confusing them. They really need to go back and look at their notes. I make my students go back to their notes and take a look. Well, wow, I really didn't write many notes on here, or you know, I wrote the wrong notes, or I didn't follow the directions correctly, or I didn't do these things. I didn't do the processings. I didn't do this. So the students are reflecting as to why they're struggling, or they can say, I really have a hard time with memorizing dates. I have a hard time with maps. Um, I have a hard time with cause and effect. And students can kind of take a look at that. Now, the first time you implement this, students are going to have a hard time. So just being around, walking around the classroom, observing, and, you know, offering them help to help reflect really gives the students the tools of what they need to be successful. And I do like an action plan. Um, what's going to happen is uh, they're going to write down the goals that they haven't mastered yet. And then what are they going to do to go ahead and do better? So those are basically how this is broken down in a quick tutorial. Um, again, if you have any questions, just reach out to me and I'm happy to assist and help. Um, but one more thing I want to go over, I do apologize, is what if I need to add another column? So what you would do here is you would click inside the row, right click, and then you would say insert, and you would go ahead and insert below. And it, what it will do is it will recreate a whole nother row for you just the way it needs to be versus trying to recreate the wheel. Uh, and then from there, you can decide how you want this to move on. Um, if you want to delete a row, you would just go ahead, right click, uh, delete cells, um, and then that would go ahead and shift up. And then from there, that would delete that. Okay, so that's basically kind of how you would take care of it. It does kind of act a little weird. Um, so basically what you need to do is just kind of reset things um, just by clicking the back button and then just merging all those cells together to get this big one area. Um, just to kind of show you what happens when it looks like this. So basically what you're going to do is you're gonna select everything, right click, and you're going to merge cells and that will go ahead and take care of that for you. And then here you'll merge these two cells and it will take away that um, divider for you. So that's just kind of to show you how you go ahead and re-manipulate the cells for easier access. And then just obviously delete so you don't have to have them there on the second page. And that's it. All right, y'all. Um, I hope that helps. And let me know if you have any more questions. All right. Thank you.